Hey, you guys, it was Raymond Brunowski again, and we're here with one of the legends, one of the top fighters in the K1 days. We're here with Mr. Glaube Fetosa. He is the man with the special kick. It's the question mark kick, and he's the one with the perfect question mark kick. Glaube, how are you doing? Good. Very, yeah, you're looking great, very man. Good. You're looking great. Yeah. You too, my friend. <laughs> you too, thanks, too. thanks, thanks, thanks. What have you been up to? Ah, teaching classes a lot. You mm. know, I'm here at, at, at in my dojo, in my gym, in Curitiba, Brazil. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys know about or heard about Curitiba. Curitiba well, is I a haven't city. been there in Brazil yet. I, I need to come. I need to come yeah. once to Brazil. Yeah. You, Remy. You have a, a lot of fans here. So oh, Curitiba, Curitiba is a city of uh, MMA fighters. Mm -hmm. You know, Anderson Silva, Vanderlei Silva, Mauricio Shogun, they all, they all born here. They all wow. have uh, roots here. Mm -hmm. So it's a big MMA city. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. And you're, you're there as a stand-up fighter? Yeah. Hey, um, well, you have been, uh, of course, in... In, in the K1, you've done a lot in the K1. How was it to, to fight in the K1 days for you? It was hard, man, because, you know, I started 1998, I think a little bit before you. Mm -hmm. your, your, your first year, when was that, your first? Well, the first time I fought in K1 was 2002. Two. That was my first fight in Sendai against uh, Ray Seifo. Oh, yeah. my buddy. <laughs> Ray. <laughs> yeah, so I fought Mike Bernardo. Mm -hmm. I fought Mike Bernardo first fight. And mm -hmm. then it was a big, very big uh, uh, change for me because I come from Kyokushin Karate. And Kyokushin, we don't hit the face. Yeah. We have no boxing skills. Mm -hmm. you no, know, so I had to change everything, my style, you know, it was kind of very hard for me because mm -hmm. I'm very technical, a fighter. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, not a little bit different, uh, uh, Francisco Filho. Mm -hmm. Francisco Filho, strong fighter. He's very strong. Very fighter. strong, very strong. Very strong. You know him very well. <laughs> you fought him. Are you still in the fight game? Uh, he has dojo. He has, you know, he's a, he's a, he's responsible for the Kyokushin in South America. Yeah. Here in in in, in Brazil, South America, he's the like a chairman. Of, yes, of yes, that's it. That's that's the word. So I'm one of the 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 the, the dojos uh, connected to him. My gym is connected to to uh, we 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 have the same organization, mm -hmm. you know, and. Uh, Regarding the, 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 your, your question, so it was a big change for me. And then especially my first fighter was against, I think, the, the, one of the most dangerous fighters on hands, Mike mm -hmm. Bernardo. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, oh, Mike Bernardo boxing. He's, he's he very strong. tough on boxing, strong fighter. Yeah. You know, back on 1990, he was second place in 1996 against yeah. Andy. So <laughs> that was my first fight. I remember... I remember because we did the preparation, the, the fighting camp in Seattle with Morris Smith. You yeah. know him? Of course I know Morris Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Morris Smith. So uh, I was there to train, and then he came to me, hey, Glaube, you who who your first fight? Who, who is your first opponent? I said, Mike Bernard said, oh, I think they don't like you. <laughs> I think they don't like you. It, it was very hard for me. No, it was, it was. I mean, fighting in a K1 is, is hard, but if your first fight is going to be against uh, Mike Bernardo, when I can understand why Maurice said that, because yeah. Mike Bernardo is so strong, especially with his hands, with his boxing. Yeah. He's great at it, yeah. yeah. Uh, Glove, are you, you, are you still uh, in the fight game? Uh, you know, just teaching and... I I have done some work, uh, coaching, you know, in uh, uh, MMA camps. Mm -hmm. You know, I the the last couple of years, I work with uh, I don't know if you know the guys from UFC, uh, Junior Dos Santos. Yeah, yeah, uh, of course. Heavyweight. 
Maurice yeah, Shogun. Yes, yeah. Maurice Shogun from here, Curitiba. I, I, yeah. I met him here when I moved back. Uh, I moved from uh, uh, Sao Paulo to, to Curitiba, and then I met uh, Maurice. I have been working with Vito Belfort. Belfort. Well. Yeah, and other uh, MMA fighters here. Because yeah. uh, they want to specialize, you know, uh, kickboxing skills. And then they usually come to me. <laughs> And they yeah, of course, because, because they know the ground game, but yeah. they, they, they want to be better in the stand-up fighting. And of yes. course, uh, you know, if it's Glauber, Glauber Fetosa living near your near your, your, your yeah. city, then mm -hmm. he's the one you can, you know, go to to train the, the stand-up fighting skills. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Good job. Good job. Good for you. Are, are you still in contact with all the K1 fighters? Uh. The closest one, Ray. Because Seifu. we train, yeah, Ray, Ray Seifu. Mm -hmm. Because Ray, we we like, you know, we, we trained together for more than 10 years. Mm. We start training in uh, year 2000. Uh, Francisco Filho and I, we went to Denver. That time, uh, Ray was training at Denver, America. And then we went there, and then we became very good friends. And then when uh, his cousin became my, uh, our boxing coach in Tokyo. So we were all together for yeah. more than 10 years, I think. Wow, yeah. wow, that's nice. So you're still involved with uh, with the fight game a bit as a, as a trainer, you're teaching right now, and you're still in contact with, with uh, Ray Sevo as, as K1 brother. So, yeah. um, you know, what do you think that, you know, when the K1... Uh, went bankrupt. What was your feeling about that? Because when K1 stops somewhere 2009, 2010, it was for us as K1 fighters that is like the big company, the big yeah. stadiums, the big fighters all went when yeah. when when gone, you know. And it was an era that was fantastic for the fight game, but it was so sad that. K1 stopped being the the strongest fighting organization in the world. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Um, when 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 we you know we we as a fighter, as we you know because I I was living in Japan, I was living in Tokyo. I went to Tokyo uh, when I started to leave there 2003. 2003. Well, I was you Japanese. Uh -huh. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, just to survive. So, but we, you know, when we start to see, oh, uh, they not paying you right now. They pay you after, you yeah. know. Before that, when I started, I don't know you, in 1998. Okay, uh, back in the day, we used to fight on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And then on Tuesday, they pay us cash. Straight wow. everything on cash. Oh. That was 1998, 99, 2000. Everything was on cash. That's nice. It was, it was <laughs> like, you know, they call us from the office, Kyokushin office. Oh, come mm -hmm. here, your money is already here. Yeah. I went there, boom, take everything on cash. Mm. And then... I don't know, like like you said, 2000, what was that? You, 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 paid, you paid your taxes, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can pay, pay the tax for us. <laughs> you can pay the tax for us. Uh, okay, they, okay, okay. <laughs> they, they'll manage everything for us, uh -huh. you know? And then, and then suddenly it started to change, you know? Uh, not paying right away, just mm -hmm. paying after. And then takes months to come. You know, I know good friends of, of, you know, that they were fighting without getting paid. Mm. Oh I didn't do that. I don't know you, but I didn't do that. I you got know? paid. I got paid in full. Yeah. I got, uh, nothing was, you know, I got paid. Every, every fight that I had got paid. Yeah. I'm glad about that. I know, I know. Like Everton Teixeira. You know, mm -hmm. the other Brazilian yeah. guy. Oh, yeah, with yeah. Reds. He has he had many fights unpaid. They, they wow. didn't pay him. They wow. still 
thing, you know, Kyokushin's, you know, is they 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 taking care of him mm. right now and paying slowly because it's too much. I said, oh, crazy. I know Ray, Ray also. I don't know. I think Ray also got some issue mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. that. But for me, just once, I was uh, there was one fight. They said, oh, you come to Japan because I. That was 2009. I was already back to, to, to Brazil. And then they come to me, okay, uh, you come to Japan, you're fighting. The elimination, 2009. Yeah. I said, ah, but I didn't get paid from my last fight. Wow. And if I, if I don't get paid, I'm not fighting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I'm just telling you now. No, no, no. You can come and then once you get here, you pay you. Yeah. And then they pay. Mm -hmm. That was okay. And then I fought. Yeah, but I know many guys who fought we not getting paid. So big issue. Yeah, so even I even believe, huh? even Alistair Overeem didn't get paid. Yeah, crazy, crazy. He didn't get paid. What? Well, that's yeah. what I know. What? What he told me, he didn't yeah. get paid. And a lot of other fighters didn't get paid either. Yeah. So I didn't. I said no. I'm not fighting with no. You know, if you know, if they don't pay before, I'm not fighting. Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. For me, when everything started, because you know, Kyokushin has good uh, Kyokushin Japanese big organization, they have connections, that, yeah. And then they oh, K1 is not too good, K1 maybe not. I said, ah, I, I can't believe because it's too big, too big, too famous. The Japanese mm -hmm. people love it, you know, that you are yeah. a big star in Japan, the, the, the way Japanese people treat us. Like heroes and everything, I said, man, that is. And then once was over, I said, man, that's sad. Yeah, because it was. I don't know you. I didn't see any other uh, audience like Japanese people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, they 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 give us so much value for what we do. So yeah, I'm totally very agree. sad. About that. You're completely right about that. Hey. Um, Joe Rogan, he recently posted uh, um, a video about your uh, no. uh, your kick, yeah. your Brazilian kick. Brazilian How was that that uh, uh, Joe Rogan, you know, he posted the technique, the, yeah. the question mark kick. How was it for you to see that kick uh, by, posted by Joe yeah. Rogan? Yeah, Joe Rogan, pretty big. I mean, uh, it's and then I send message to him, say, hey, um, I'm very happy, not just because who you are, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the Joe Rogan, but because you know, game, you know, fighting game, you know, you know, the game, you know, the fights. He you knows know, all the fights. He knows all the fights. <laughs> you know, stand up, grounding, fight, everything, all, all fights. He's very specialized. When I have, a, 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 you know, a message like that, it's, it's, I'm very happy with it because all the training, you know, you uh, so we give so much. Yeah. Uh, when we were training, we left yeah. behind everything else just to train, and then after, you know, you have a uh, 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 what do you say in English? Someone telling like that is very, is, it's it's very nice. It's not it's not the first time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you if you saw he has this uh, I think podcast he, he yeah. interviews uh, people he, he yeah, was yeah, interviewing yeah, he, was yeah. yeah he, he was interviewing is Israel Adesanya yeah you no know, Israel Adesanya and then he showed that kick to Adesanya hey Adesanya see this guy Grabe Feitosa is the master in Brazilian kingdom <laughs> and that time was oh Joe Rogan yeah. showed to Adesanya said oh who is this guy you know but nice. you know oh that's nice you, Oh, As you define nice. me, gentlemen, you know, it's very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we no, but that's. I believe that that is one of the power of the K1 back in the days. You know, you with the question mark kick, me with the flying knee, yeah. uh, Peter Arch with his low kicks, LeBunner with his hard punches, standing southpaw, uh, Ray Safer with his hands low, and thousand the people, you know, with his hard punches. So everybody had his own style, you know. Yeah. And I think I believe that that was one of the, the strongest, you know, points of K1, you know, to the world because 
everybody could like one of the people, you know, because yeah. we're all different fighters, yeah, all with our special techniques. And some people would love my uh, flying knee. Some people would love your question mark kick. All the other will, you know. And that is that is, I believe, one of the strongest points of uh, of K1. If you look back at your famous kickboxing career, what was your favorite achievements? Favorite what? Your favorite achievement? What? Because you have, uh, you have maybe a championship. You have fought maybe against someone. What that you thought, hey, he's very strong, but and uh, you win, you won from him. You know what was your biggest achievement in ah, in, K1, in fight uh, fight game? <laughs> ah, that that crazy night on 2005 for me was epic. I mean, that fight, that uh, uh, GP on 2005, yeah, because uh, Sam and I at the final. Mm. And then that was a uh, oh no okay I started as a reserve fight against yeah. Gary Goodrich, and then they you know though I don't know if you saw the fight that front kick that yeah. he spit his <laughs> teeth oh man that was one crazy fight and then another one with the Musashi the mm. flying yeah. uh, <laughs> I did yeah. your speciality I did your love speciality. it love it I love it <laughs> yeah. And then the flying knee, and then I got knocked out by Sevi. Yeah. So everything in one night, mm -hmm. and all different fights, different uh, 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 highlights on 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 my on my uh, uh, career. Yeah. So for me, that fight, that night, and then one special night also in Las Vegas when I won. I was the same year, 2005, mm -hmm. and I won the GP in in, in Las Vegas. That was, I think, my peak as well. Yeah, yeah. Because you had, of course, a great career. And what are you teaching your students now uh, that how they have to fight and how they have to, you know, go through life as a fighter? Yeah. Um, you know, we, we learn a lot about not just fighting, but how you face problems or issues, not just in a ring or, or on a tatami or, you know, training, but in life, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, first of all, you need to be a good example. Yeah, you need, your students must look at you and say, ah, uh, kids look, oh, I want to be like him. You know, yeah. I want to train like him. I want to kick like him. So I believe, and I, I, I don't like when fighters, and uh, they retired. And they don't train anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, training for me is a life. I train yeah. for my life. I, uh, I, I will never stop. If if I stop training, I'm dead. Yeah. You know, and then this is the example you need to do uh, to show to you to your students. You know, and then and then of course, uh, small tips because sometimes it's too. Comp I mean, for us not not that complicated. Because we we lived the whole the whole cycle of fighting, but sometimes you have to understand and uh, not to give too much information for a student who is starting. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes they don't understand, so you have to slowly add in more informations, and then you see him understanding step by step, and then suddenly, boom. He can yeah. walk, you know, he can go and fight and live his experience. I understand. And, that's, you know, that's the, yeah, yeah you're, you're completely right about that because that's the same how I try to do it. It's not just the fighting. It's not just the punching and how you make the techniques. Uh, the fight sport has a lot more, you know, that you can uh, give to all the students that are, yeah. you know, fighting because... They have to be on time. If you know, if they have to be on time at at the fight sport, they have to be in time in life also. Yeah. If they make choices, you know, if you're gonna do bad things or you're gonna go do good things, you know, yeah. all the choices that you make have, you know, they maybe is gonna be have you're gonna you're gonna have a problem next yeah, time. Consequences. So, <laughs> yeah, consequences. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, they have consequences. So you you have to you know make right choices, and that's. 
yeah. that we as you know uh, retired fighters are trying to give to all the the students, and that's yeah. you know that's that's, that's it's a great thought. Yeah. Um, Lau, you fought also against Border Hari, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. How was it Once. to fight ah, against? Hard. <laughs> yeah? Very hard. Very hard. Um, after the fight, I was thinking, said, ah, I I had to do like Remy, you know, because I always thought Remy has the the, the right way to fight Bada. If Thanks. you wait, because his in and out game is too he's too explosive, especially mm -hmm. in the first round. And then I let him do it, what he wants to do, what he, he needed to do. You know, I know Remy, when I see Remy fighting Badahari, Badahari gets frust frustrated because he can go through the, 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 the defense of, yeah. of Remy. And, and Remy goes, uh, goes farther with his hands up, uh, very, very high. And then Badahari gets frustrated. And Badahari is a very emotional fighter. Once he gets frustrated... He starts to get confused. He lose control. Yeah. yeah. He lost he lose control. So that's <laughs> after my fight against Badahari, I said, man, I should, you know, follow Remy's example. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I let Thank him you. do it. And then he's very he's very explosive and dangerous fighter, especially in the first round. And he knocked me uh, down the first, he knocked Ray Seffo, he knocked Sammy, he knocked everybody in the first, mm -hmm, except mm -hmm. you, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Do you still follow the fight game? Because have you seen uh, his last fights lately? Yeah, I saw. Oh, I saw this. You know, the last one was a big issue, eh? uh, because the the uh, the audience. But I saw the other one against the Polish guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Arek, Arek. Brzozek. Yeah. yeah, with the high kick, left high kick. And Bada, Bada, but man, we, we fighters, we know that's part of, you know, suddenly comes, you know, uh, I was, you know, I was very sad because I want him to win. Yeah, I want him to win, Bada yeah. Hari. And I want the, the, the best to win, you know. Uh, one thing, one thing. I always remember from Badahari. My last fight was against Arrow Zimmer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, in 2009, that was my last K1 fight. Mm -hmm. And then I really appreciate appreciated what Badahari did. Badahari went to my locker room to give to talk to me. Said, "Hey, you won the fight." I said, "Ah, oh, man, I think it was a draw." I said, "No, no, 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 no. You won the fight." Mm -hmm. And then he went to his fight. So yeah, yeah. I, I never forget that. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. you know, sometimes sometimes we fighters we have some connections like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I understand. I understand. You also fought against Alistair Overeem, right? Yeah. And how was it to fight against Overeem? And how was it, you know, that you see him coming back to the the stand-up fighting? Because he has been Uh, one of the most strongest fighters in maybe in the K1, and then he went to um, to MMA, UFC, and now he will maybe return to uh, to glory for the stand-up fighting. What do you think about that? Okay, when I fought, I fought uh, the same night you fought Francisco Filho, right? Yeah. Shane Francisco. So I fought uh, Alistair. That Alistair was pride version. <laughs> no, not to be. He was, I think, 94 kilos. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. 120, 125, I don't know. And then uh, I knew him only because pride. He, you know, he was fighting pride. Uh, I did a good preparation for that. Yeah, you know, I, I was in that time. I consider I was very fast. You know, my hand and my hand was they, they were flowing. I just that fight, especially I came from a fight against Ernesto Host because yeah. I fought Ernesto 2004 for elimination round for K1. Yeah. I lost on points to Host, but that fight was special for me. 
I learned a lot with Ernesto. The way he controlled the fight. I said, ah, because when you fight, some, I, I believe you get some of your opponents. Of and course. Fight, of course. Yeah. They learn. Yeah. In that fight against Ernesto, he showed me how to control, how to dominate, slowly dominate the fight and then win. Yeah. And I said, man, he did perfect. That's what Mr. Perfect. I said, <laughs> okay. And then my next fight was uh, Alistair. So I was very confident on that. I was very confident on that. And then I fought Alistair, and then everything went good. And then I finished him with the punching. And then after that, he, uh, he became very big, strong. Very, very, very big. <laughs> very, very big. You know, uh, first time when, you know, Junior Dos Santos, he was yeah. uh, uh, UFC champion. Uh, Junior Dos Santos. And yeah. then he called me to his camp because that fight against Alistair, because Junior Dos Santos, he was going to fight Alistair yeah. on UFC. And then they called me, said, hey, Glaube, we need you. We need you to, you know, for, for the preparation. I said, okay, let's go. And then I joined the team. And then two weeks, uh, two weeks after, uh, Alistair got caught on doping test. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the, the fight dropped. And then yeah. the other guy came was um, Frank Mir. Yeah. And then Junior Dos Santos fought Frank Mir. And that time I was helping uh, Junior to fight Alistair and then Frank Mir. You know? Uh, what I know is Alistair has been in this fighting sport for a very long time. Yeah, he is. Yeah? Very long, I think. More than 20 years. And that's a lot. And then you get, ah, uh, your, I don't know, my body got tired. I don't know you, Remy, but my body got yeah. very tired. Not body, yeah. but, but uh, uh, worse than that, mentally tired. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Uh, Alistair has the skills, has the, 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 the body, but I don't know about his mind. Mm -hmm. If he's uh, motivated, if he's okay, he wants, he's hungry to fight, he can do very, 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 very good on, on, his, on his way back. Yeah. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Me neither. Me neither. I, I need to see that because I know to see. He's, he's somewhere around 41, I believe, and yeah. maybe 40. And there is maybe a moment to retire. I'm not sure how he's going to do it, but... Like you said, if he's still hungry between the ears, if he's still hungry in the mind, he has to do it. But I'm not sure about that because he's fighting some youngsters. I hope they will um, give him a not too strong um, opponent yeah. in the first first fight. Uh, but we will see what's what's going to happen. But hey, uh, he, 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 sorry, sorry, he's supposed to fight Rico, right? He they will fight Rico, but he, to uh, Rico. and then they didn't fought. Yeah. So he's trying to recover from the back injury, and then maybe next year they're gonna have the have the fight. But you know, I, I don't know if is that the best plan. You know, when you're yeah, coming know. from For from sure. from UFC, you know, ground game and all that, and going to another organization and then fight the champion. Maybe That's you right. should fight first against a, a less strong opponent, mm -hmm. build yourself up, you know, and then fight the champion. We've seen it with Bader Hari. He fought the strongest fighter in, in, in glory, and that is that is Rico Verhoeven. Twice he lost. And then, you know, he went down, 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 down. And now he's fighting Rizocek. Couldn't win from Rizocek twice. So maybe that is not the best way to, to, to go in. Um, Saki returned. Uh, Gokan yeah. Saki he returned to... Uh, to glory for a stand-up fight, and he chose a less stronger fighter. Maybe is that is the the way to do it? You know, that's the best way. Maybe I then agree. work himself up. Yeah, and maybe then fight against uh, Rico. What, yeah. what is uh, what is your your favorite KO in with your you know you know your question mark kick? Mm. Question mark kick is that one against Toa? Yeah, the one Joe Rogan shot. <laughs> But I'm, I'm, you know, I have two favorites. I can't decide which one because, okay, I very know about the Brazilian kick, but the flying knee, your speciality against Musashi, that, 
that uh, leave me at, at the final, mm -hmm. you know, because that was, you know, that flying me because Musashi, because you and Musashi, you guys in 2003 and four, you guys, you were the champion. Miss Musashi was the second. You guys yeah. twice in a row, twice. you know, champion in, 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 in second place. And mm -hmm. then Sim and I came, and then you suddenly lost to to, yeah. to Sammy. You lost to Sammy, and then Musashi lost to me. Yeah. But that one was that was a special for me. Yeah. Because you yeah. feeling, you know, the K1 final is the final. The entrance, everything is is up, is the high, is the is the most. Yeah. yeah. Then how was it for you to fight in a stadium? With more than 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 people. Yeah. How was it for you to fight in, you know, those big, big Osaka Dome, Fukuoka, yeah. uh, Tokyo Dome, and all that? How was it to fight? How was it to be such a superstar in Japan? Ooh, like in Kyokushi, we won't know. But man, when K1 came, uh, Everything changed. Everything. Yeah, I mean, we didn't change inside, but change, of course, like the way people see you, you know. I remember my first fight, I was telling you about Mike Bernardo. Mm -hmm. I, uh, it was in Nagoya, Nagoya Dome. Mm -hmm. I don't know, 30-something thousand. And then when they were announcing, in that time, they used to announce each fighter before the fight starts. They they show different uh, they they had different show, and they show oh San Greco pa and then Andy Hug pa Peter Arts I love it man that was my skin was oh the, the, crazy crazy yeah. and then my heart and then passing the you know the fights the years and then you get used to but the yeah. beginning a lot of pressure. Yeah. Lots of pressure, especially because, like we Kyokushin, we have big organization, a lot of responsibility with the organization. So it was big for us, very big. Mm -hmm. So how was it for you to walk on the street? You know, did people recognize you when you walk on the street in Japan? Yeah, recognize <laughs> the Japanese people are like, ah, it's a Nabatosa-san, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, I remember once uh, was very nice. Like Filio and I, we went to Disneyland, Tokyo yeah. Disneyland. And that time he was big, you know, Filio because man, he know Andy, he know you know San Greco first. He it's was the very big. <laughs> yeah, HG. And then I was just following him. Mm -hmm. You know, we went to uh, went to Tokyo Disneyland, but we had cap everything. Now I was me and him, his wife at that time, and then we were just walking, having fun, everything else, and then suddenly one one Japanese, hey, that's Filio, that's Fitosa, man, <laughs> oh stop! And then the the, the the workers of Disney took us and said, hey, what are you doing here? You had to contact us before. You yeah. have to to tell. So no, oh, I don't we 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 should we 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 thought was fine. No, no, no. Next time you call us before. And then I think it was two years later, we went we we went again. But Kyuk Shin called Disneyland. He said, Oh, Glaube Filio, they're going with the family. Yeah, yeah. Said, oh, that was nice. They because received VIP us. treatment. VIP treatment <laughs> on the gate and took us with the map. Hey, what do which one you want to go? Do yeah. we, you don't need to take line. Eh? Nothing. Oh, mm. that was that was good, man. It you was know, a nice time. The way the, the way the, the Japanese so polite, you yeah. know, so wait. Oh, and we love all, love we all miss that, eh, brother? So, sorry, we all miss. I know. Yeah, you yeah, were, yeah. Was of time, man. We Six miss that. We miss that time. We miss that time. You know, to go to Japan. With all the fans, the politeness from the fans, they sometimes they cry. You know, they cry when yeah. they when you shake their hands. Yeah. And man, it's we miss that. We, of course, we miss that, and we miss the the big fights uh, over there. So, 
But now, now we have glory. Do you still follow glory? A little bit. <laughs> Not too much. Yeah. Not too much. Okay, so so you don't know about the new talents that are coming up in glory? I was I was seeing, I know one he's not heavyweight, but I know Donovan Wisa. Yeah. 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 He's good. Very good. I saw him fight. Yeah. And, uh, and another thing I want to I want to ask you. What is that on Suriname? <laughs> <laughs> I know you, I know Ernesto, I know Tyrone Spong. Yeah. And now this Donovan Wissa too. Yeah. And Suriname. And you know, we we from South America. Yeah, we, we're <laughs> all from South America. I think you we I th I think we don't need to see it as you know, we come from Suriname, you come from Brazil. Yeah. We're all strong people in South America. <laughs> South strong America is South strong. America. Crazy. Very strong, very strong. Because all the The ground fighters, you know, the UFC fighters, even Bellator fighters, they all come from Brazil. Yeah. Us as Suriname people, you know, like you said, Time Respong and Esther Ho, me and myself, you know, a lot of great fights. Donovan Wiss is also coming from Suriname. And there are a lot more fighters coming from, yeah. from Suriname. And I don't know why, but we're such strong fighters and even strong, even in strong mind, strong mind, yeah. strong heart. Yeah, yeah, clever fighter, strong heart. So if you if you had the chance, Club, to change something in kickboxing. Sorry, sorry, you... ask again, please. Ask again oh, because ask again my I think the connection went, went bad. Ask again. Okay, please. if you could change something in kickboxing, what would that be? To change. Yeah, You're changing kickboxing. I mean, in my yeah, career, maybe, you mean maybe the, ring, maybe the ring or maybe the fighting structure, maybe bring back the 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 the, the tournament, you know, the eight man tournament, because the eight man ah, tournament ah. is gone now. It's gone. It's gone. Uh -huh. I hate it. I hate it that it's gone. I, I want to take it. Tournament. It's it's so um uh, it's like the World Cup in soccer. Mm -hmm. It's the mm -hmm. same. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you change that, man, where is the you know for the for the people, man, it's it's so uh, excitement, so it so is. excitement, so and and then make you like a champ, you win three fights in one night, that's that makes you very special, yeah, that makes you very special because I come I come from Kyokushin, Kyokushin is the same. Yeah. Our, our World Cup, World Tournament, it's three days fighting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, three days fighting. You have to uh, to win eight fights in three days. Mm. To become champion, you need to be special. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and then that in, you know, the, the formula that we had in K1, uh, you know, changing champions every year, you know, makes much more excitement. Yeah, much more. We have the champion now, Rico Verhoeven. He's been now for like maybe six, seven years, the same champion. Yeah. Do you think uh, they should bring the eight man tournament back because of that? Because we've been seeing now one champion every year. And he's now champion for now, like I said, seven, seven, eight years now. Yeah. Should they bring it back to the tournament yeah. in the glory? Yeah, for, for sure. Like, example, you take belts, right? I mean, yeah. it's kind it's not a league, it's, it's challenge, and then you fight. Like, let me say in 2005, for me to be second place. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many fights you fought each, uh, on each year, but in 2005, in five. I fought eight times. Mm. I had eight fights on 2005. Man, we've been active all year. Yeah, you know, you know, from um, a match or a GP and match and GP again. You see the guy fighting all the time. Yeah, you know, and then you see like UFC champions. They have the belt, yeah. but they fight 
if if most once a year it's yeah. too, it's, it's it's not enough you know and, enough. and then you see if you see uh, um, a career fighter a fighter career is is like when you reach the peak it's like what it's more than 10 years i don't think so mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's hard to fight 10 years on yeah. the elite yeah Concept, elite conceptive yeah so you in 10 years you have 10 fights maybe i don't know if, if yeah, i'm telling you about belts mm-hmm. but i need gp is very important it is it is important i know and i miss that and i i think uh, you see or or even glory even bellator yeah. you know they they should bring back the eight man tournament because it's something special and yeah. i love the eight man tournament because you don't know in the beginning who's going to be the champion you don't yeah. know from from up from who's going to win because yeah. everything can happen you know you yeah. can you know break your hand you can get knocked out you can lose by points yeah. there's so much more that can make you lose a fight or win a fight yeah. you know so that's why you have the charm of the of the eight man tournament and i miss that i really I miss really that. miss that yeah miss that. what are your plans right now for the future well, man um, no just day by day <laughs> not 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 big plan now now running my 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 dojo students uh i i am family business right my my wife maybe not not sure yet this we 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 studying about it's not it's nothing about fighting mm-hmm. but we because i'm vegan now i don't know if you know the the term vegan my son my son is vegan my oldest son is is larger than i am he's bigger than eight than, than, yeah. my, than myself uh-huh. he's two he's two now he's doing basketball in the states yeah and he's vegan also so i know the term yeah. vegan nice so yeah. my wife is she's vegan for more than 10 years mm-hmm. and then i'm vegan for almost three mm-hmm. my daughter is vegan too so we're thinking she's we you know planning to open a vegan restaurant oh, wow Vietnam. so that's uh um will be very nice we we're very happy mm-hmm. with with the nice. idea you know and then the the concept of everything we love animals you know i have many dogs and cats at home mm-hmm. you know so i think we all happy and excited about yeah. it <laughs> and everybody is healthy yeah everybody healthy yeah that's the most important your family is yeah. healthy you're healthy and you know i'm i'm so great talking to you again globe because you've been you are a legend a legend in the K1 a legend in the fighting game of course and you know i was I, I, it's always fun to talk to people that uh, that were there back in the days because we also fought and uh, i learned a lot also from you you know from protecting the, the question mark kick because oh. your question mark kick is is fantastic it's one of the special Thank techniques you. that i've learned about because your you know every time you fight like you said you learn a little bit more you know and from some yeah. fights you learn a lot and um i was so happy to fight against you because because of you I, i don't know if you know that but in the first round you punched me in the eye and i couldn't mm. see anything anymore for, for the, the the two rounds after that you know uh, i came in the good. corner i came in the corner i said to ivan that was my trainer i said i cannot see with my eye i cannot see He said, "Don't worry, don't worry. Just fight, just punch, just kick." And uh, yeah, for me it was it was a special fight, you know, because I learned a lot that you have to continue even if if it's not going your your way, but you have to continue. So that's what I'm yeah. teaching my my students also at my Bonyaski Academy. So I want to yeah. thank you. I want to thank you for all uh, you know for all the advice and for for talking to me. And I hope you will have a nice restaurant with your wife and 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 kids and all that. And um, maybe we'll see each, each other in the future because I'm really, really planning to to go to Brazil, you know, maybe. And, and of course, if I'm going to go to Chiba, Brazil, eat my food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Claudio. And maybe uh, we'll talk uh, some other time. Oh, thank you very much, Remy. 
It was a big, big pleasure uh, to know you as a fighter, uh, to have fought with you. We fought in Hawaii 2007, yeah. and everything that you, you know, uh, your, your flying knee technique inspired me as well on my flying <laughs> on Musashi. You know, I always uh, try to do something particular, uh, similar, you know, and then that I put on you as well. So thanks, thank you very thanks. much and to be a great fighter and champion. Thank Oz. you. Thank you very much. Oz. Oz.